Scott Kilberg, the Video Foot Doc, here with another video for you on all things foot and ankle. Today I'm going to talk about a very serious condition that primarily affects diabetics, although it can affect uh, other people as well. This condition is called Charcot Neuroarthropathy. It's kind of a big word, but it's also a very serious condition. Essentially, in Charcot Neuroarthropathy, uh, what develops is a very serious and unusual type of fracturing that occurs in the foot uh, or the ankle. Um, in which the bones essentially out of the blue start to break down. And it's not just one or two bones, it's, it's several different bones. Uh, now normally the pattern in Charcot neuroarthropathy is a fracture across the middle part of the foot, although it can affect other joints as well, and as I said before, it can also affect the ankle. This is a very serious condition often found uh, in diabetics because it is related to nerve disease. What essentially happens in this disease condition, and there are several different theories regarding it, is that the bones and the joints themselves become broken down through a number of different ways. One theory uh, suggests that uh, the bones are broken down because there's poor sensation and then there's increased pressure to the joint, which eventually causes the joints to gradually break down until ultimately they begin to fracture. Uh, another theory is that because there's poor, uh, there's, there's poor control of blood vessels because the nerves are, are diseased, uh, there's almost going to be a washing out of bone because the blood flow going into the bones themselves has become excessive because the, the neurological control of the, of the amount of blood flow going into the bone is not uh, regulated well and this will cause the minerals to leach out of the bone and ultimately the bones begin to uh, fracture. Um, Probably the reality is it's probably a mix of both of those theories, uh, but essentially the result is a fracture that has occurred where there's no injury at all. The bones of the foot uh, just suddenly begin to break one day. And this is an unusual fracture in that this process is not just a break and then it's over. This fracturing process is fairly continuous and can go on for up to three months time period. After this fracturing process is over, uh, basically, the bones then begin to sort of consolidate um, back into a, a hard bone where the fracturing starts to heal. Uh, and then it can occur for about three months. And then after that time period, uh, the bones themselves begin to remodel a little bit in that they uh, kind of start to change shape and sort of uh, be affected by the way one walks following that. Um, the reason why this is such a devastating disease, especially for diabetics, is that when the bones begin to fracture, the foot will actually change shape, especially if the fracturing is in the middle of the foot. When the fracturing occurs here, what essentially happens is that the foot becomes much more flatter and becomes almost rocker bottom shaped in that the bones underneath here become much more prominent and that often leads to wounds uh, because of the prominence of the bone against the skin and it makes wearing standard shoes very difficult because of the rubbing that's going to occur against the skin between the uh, bone of uh, the skin and the shoe itself. Uh, this is a condition that's uh, somewhat easy to notice uh, but oftentimes it's mistaken for infection um, of either the skin or even infection of the bone, especially uh, when someone goes to the emergency room for this condition. Uh, generally the fracturing process will be sort of heralded by a uh, warmth, a redness, and a lot of swelling to the foot itself. Um, uh, simple x-rays can be taken which will show the fracturing process. Uh, MRI and bone scans can also be taken which uh, will show that there's a breakdown of the bone itself. Um, but unfortunately, this process can mimic uh, the effect of having uh, a, a bone infection. And so oftentimes people are falsely treated for having a, a bone infection when in fact they have a serious fracturing process that needs a little bit of a different care as antibiotics aren't going to be helpful against this particular uh, condition itself. It is absolutely vital that if a uh, diabetic develops Charcot neuroarthropathy, that they immediately be taken off of uh, weight bearing and placed in a cast and crutches or in a wheelchair so that no weight can, is placed on the foot itself. Because this fracturing process lasts for approximately three months, every single step that one takes during that process will break the bones down further and will further deform the foot uh, until ultimately the uh, bones are almost unrecognizable and that uh, one bone's going one way and the other's going up and the other's going down and that will lead to some very significant problems once this process is finished 
because the resulting deformity uh, of the foot won't fit into a standard shoe and the diabetic will be much more likely to develop wounds and other, uh, other types of uh, serious uh, skin complications. Uh, once this process has, uh, has finished and the fracturing process has, has basically stopped, uh, then one can be taken out of the cast and can be made to, wear, to bear more weight using a, a protective walking boot to help uh, keep the foot more stable. Um, the end result of this, hopefully, is going to be a foot that is not radically uh, changed from what it started out as um, if the, if the uh, foot can be treated early enough in the disease process. Um, special shoes with uh, you know, deeper, uh, deeper fit and specialized uh, custom fitted inserts can help to protect the bottom of the foot from developing wounds and other problems on the skin as a result of the, the, the deformity. However, if the deformity is really significant, if someone has walked all over a, uh, a, a fractured foot of this type um, and the bones are, are wildly out of place, um, it's going to create a lot of problems uh, ultimately in the end as this process finally winds down and, and, and stops itself. And the foot either has to be reconstructed in order to be, in order for the structure of the foot to return back to what it was previous uh, to the fracture process itself, uh, or uh, significantly specialized shoes and inserts need to be uh, used to protect the foot uh, from uh, from harm. Now, surgical reconstruction of charco deformity is is complicated to say the least. Um, it depends on the surgeon and uh, the, the nature of the deformity itself. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not, uh, but it always has a risk of fairly significant complications just given the nature of uh, Charcot disease itself. So that's why it's so very important to, to basically stop the disease process uh, right away and get off the foot as soon as, it, as, soon as the uh, fracturing starts um, in order for uh, the, you know, the, best, uh, the best level of recovery and the best chance that the foot will retain a somewhat normal shape following the end of this process. If you're a diabetic and you notice that your foot suddenly becomes red, um, warm, and swollen, it is vitally important that you have it evaluated by your podiatrist immediately uh, that same day. Um, it oftentimes will be the Charcot disease process as I talked about and that definitely needs to have immediate care. But then again, it could also be an infection, especially if there's a wound involved or, you've, or there's something that's punctured into the skin, and that requires a little bit of a different treatment. But uh, a podiatrist will be able to easily tell the difference between uh, a wound with infection uh, and possible later bone infection and a, a Charcot disease or a Charcot neuroarthropathy deformity that's occurring uh, and progressing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please look for more videos on all things foot and ankle on this site as well as others. Or you may look at my website at www.inpodiatrygroup.com. Thank you.